Welcome. Today I'm going to show you what generics are in Java, how they make your life easier, and how to implement your own classes and methods that use generics. Generics as we know them today were first available in Generic Java, a community mod released in 1998 by Gilad Bracker, Martin Odesky, David Stoutsmeyer, and Philip Wadler. Gilad and David worked for Javasoft, which was the part of Sun responsible for developing Java, although the project was initially independent. In 1999, Gilad proposed that generics were added to Java, based on the ideas from generic Java, and they were eventually officially added to Java in 2004 with the release of Java 5. Generics allow the author of a class or method to introduce type parameters, which are symbols that can be substituted for any concrete type. You've probably seen generics around before. For instance, the list interface has the generic type parameter E, which is the type of elements in the list. When you use the list interface, you normally substitute this for a concrete type, like string or integer. Before generics, there was no way to tell Java that a list only contained strings. You could only create lists that could contain any sort of object. This had a few major downsides. First, it's a hassle to use. Whenever you want to get a string back out of the list, you would need to cast the object to string to be able to work with it. Second, it introduces bugs. The compiler doesn't know that I'm not supposed to be putting integers into this list, so it's not going to stop me. But if I try to run the program, then a class cast exception happens at runtime when I try to cast the integer to string. Nowadays, your IDE will complain at you if you're not parameterizing your lists. Now I've parameterized this list with string, I'm being told that I can't put an integer into the list. I'm also being told that these casts are unnecessary. The other thing that's unnecessary is the second string on the right hand side of the equals sign here. Since Java 7, Java's smart enough to figure out what the type parameters should be in some instances using a process called type inference. So I can just use an empty diamond here. In fact, type inference is getting better all of the time and more recent versions of Java are able to infer generic type parameters in more and more situations. The last major benefit of generics is that they allow you to write generic classes and algorithms. We could have eliminated casts and provided stronger compile time checks for lists by implementing a special string list object. The trouble is that we would then need to create an integer list and a double list, and in fact a bespoke class for every type of object you'd want to put in a list. With generics, the author of the list can just use the symbol E everywhere, and that will be swapped out for the particular type that the user needs, even types that didn't exist when the list was first implemented. Now we know what generics are and how to use them, but how do we implement a class that uses generics? Look at this one, pair. It takes two strings in its constructor and has getters for them. It's just a simple way to carry around exactly two strings. One day, we realize that we need to have pairs of integers too. We can employ generics to reuse this code. What we want to do is introduce a type parameter, which we do right here. We can do the same thing with interfaces as well. By convention, we normally use the letter T as our type parameter, but actually, it can be anything. 
Now we replace all of the occurrences of string, except for the one in to string, to t. The compiler will understand that any time t appears in our pair, it refers to the type that the user provides when they construct an instance of pair. Now we can create a pair of integers. In fact, we can create pairs of anything. Here's a new class, person. We can create a pair of people. You can have multiple type parameters in the same class. You've probably seen or used the map interface, which has two type parameters, one for the keys and one for the values. Maybe we decide that we want to create pairs with two different types. We can add another type parameter right here just after the first one. Again, by convention, we normally use s as the second type parameter, but we don't have to. This time, we want the second element in the pair to be of type s. So we need to change the type that second is stored as, the type that is set as in the constructor, and the type that is returned in the getter. Now our previous pairs need to define both type parameters. but we can create pairs of strings and integers like this. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos about Java and programming. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and means that I can continue to dedicate time to making more of these. Thanks. All right, back to generics. You can add type parameters to methods as well as classes. To add a type parameter on a method, you put it just before the method's return type in angled brackets like before. You can then use that type parameter in the method's parameters and inside the method. For example, here's a method that takes a list and reverses it. It can accept any list and it returns a list of the same type. It's useful to implement reverse like this because collections.reverse actually changes the original list, which you might not want to do.
Now we understand how to use generics and how to implement classes and methods that use them. One other useful feature of generics is the ability to bound type parameters. For instance, we might want to make a class generic, but require that the generic parameter implements a certain interface like comparable or is a subclass of a certain class like number. We do this with the extends keyword. Note, in this context, we always use the word extends, even if we're using an interface. It's a bit inconsistent because normally you would implement an interface, but just roll with it. Here's another version of the pair class, which only allows you to create pairs of numbers. See, if I try and create a pair of strings, it won't compile. And here's a version that requires the concrete type implement comparable. Note that comparable itself takes a type parameter, and we pass t back in because we want to be able to compare t's with t's. Now that we know the concrete type implements comparable, we can use the comparable interface within the pair class. For instance, we can use compare2 to implement a method getLargest, which gets the largest value of the pair. Thanks for watching this overview of generics in Java. We learned what generics are in Java, how they help us write better code, and how to implement classes and methods that use them. Please do give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you found it useful. It really helps me out. Thanks for watching.